Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort so you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about how to stop your husband from divorcing you. My guest Rosa had no intimacy in her marriage. She was so tired of dealing with her husband's drinking and mental health issues, and his family was encouraging him to leave her and their three young kids. She was shocked and horrified when he brought up divorce. But today she says she feels like a princess because her husband is so loving and tender. He's flirty and adoring and devoted to her and the kids. How did she turn things around? Well, that's what she's going to share with us. And then I'll be giving out the worst relationship advice of the week award, which is as much cliche as it is ridiculous. A student shared that her husband's counselor told him this doozy, wait till your hair. All that's coming up, but first I'm going to share how to stop your husband from divorcing you. When is it too late to stop a divorce? Well, it's not too late for you. How do I know? Well, if you're still married and you're listening to this podcast, That tells me you want your marriage to last and also that you still have hope. Even if sometimes you forget where you put it or it's so small, you can't find it. That's okay. You're so committed to your marriage that you're doing research on what you can do to make it last. And as my tea bag said the other day, Abraham Lincoln said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. But what exactly should you do? If your husband wants a divorce, how do you change his mind? Well, the good news is that there are concrete things you can do to stop a divorce, even after separation. Here's what to do when your husband wants a divorce and you don't, and how to revive his love for you also. Number one, stop expecting and start hoping. Margot felt very alone. Her workaholic husband would leave before she got up in the morning and not come home until after she was in bed. On the rare occasions he was home and not napping, he wouldn't speak to her. But he did make it clear that he no longer found her attractive and that he wanted to end the marriage. She'd already done her best to communicate her feelings and needs clearly. She told him how concerned she was about his choices and how they were affecting the marriage. She tried to make it clear that his grueling schedule was the problem. She didn't realize that she was actually criticizing him and his schedule, that this was controlling, that control is disrespectful, and that respect is like oxygen for men, and that she was starving their marriage of oxygen. All of this was only natural because Margot was full of fear which is what fuels inappropriate control. And the cycle continues. Once she was able to see those blind spots, Margot made a radical change. She relinquished control. She quit trying to make her husband stay home or even stay married. She quit focusing on him at all and focused on herself, fulfilling her own desires. Her surrendering experiment was so thorough that when their yard was overgrown with grass and weeds, she didn't even try to get him to mow the lawn. Even though it was the eve of their daughter's wedding, which was to take place at their house. She didn't hint. She didn't offer a helpful reminder or a leading question. Nada. During this experiment, a funny thing happened. He quit asking for a divorce. Lots of other things happened too. The man who is supposedly not attracted to her anymore started initiating sex. He became affectionate like he had never been before, stroking her arm, bearing his heart to her, taking her on a beautiful drive through the country. She had also relinquished control of his self-care and his blood pressure dropped from 200 to 117. Mm. She said it was hard to believe that her marriage could be better than it ever was when she was just hoping he wouldn't divorce her. If you're as afraid as Marco once was, it's natural to look for reassurance or make demands. That's just part of being a mere mortal woman. But what if you gave him some space instead? What if you let go of asking his whereabouts, checking his phone, or initiating another state of the union talk? 
kicking the nasty habit of trying to control him into staying goes a long way toward having him stay. Number two, make the first move to say this. Liza was heartbroken when her husband announced, I can't do this anymore. He said they'd be better off getting a divorce because he just couldn't live with her anymore. She spent her nights alone crying. It didn't feel very dignified or empowering, but she discovered a way to tap into her power. She realized that she didn't have to be a victim because she too had a part in the breakdown of their marriage. After they had two children, she had insisted on the right way to do things, her way. She'd shut her husband out of parenting, which left her overwhelmed and resentful at having to do everything herself. Once she saw her part, Liza decided to be the first one to apologize. And she said something she had never said before. She said, I apologize for being disrespectful. And she referenced all the years she'd been controlling and critical. With those foreign words in the air, things changed at their house too. The man who never helped her began taking the kids out so she could have some alone time. He helped the kids with their homework and even cleaned the house. He started following Liza around the house to kiss her and enjoy her touch. She says their marriage is now beyond what she ever could have imagined. What would happen if you too were to make the first move and apologize for the things that you did to contribute to the breakdown? Number three, show up as your best self. Let's face it, what I've introduced so far is a pretty tall order. Mixing neediness and control on top of having the vulnerability to clean up your side of the street would be a big deal for anyone, all the more so when he seems dead set on heading out the door and you're already emotionally spent. Being on the brink of divorce is draining. It's hard to be your best self when you're exhausted. That's why self-care is the indispensable first step to intimacy. Mina knew this firsthand. Her 23-year marriage had endured religious differences, pornography addiction, bankruptcy, a miscarriage, life-threatening medical challenges, and verbal and physical abuse. The D word was thrown around in heated arguments. They had already been through betrayals and two separations. When they reconciled after their first separation a decade in, Mina was determined never to lose him again. She figured her stretched out body after multiple pregnancies was a big reason he wasn't happy with her. So she lost a lot of weight. She got lipo and breast implants. She had nine pounds of skin surgically removed from her belly. She strained her teeth. She got hair extensions. Staying the way she thought he wanted her to look took a lot of time and energy and money. She was still exhausted and still terrified of losing him. Her fear and fatigue settled into a frown, which is unattractive on even the perfect body. So she tried something different. She started a smile campaign, smiling at her husband and everyone else at every opportunity. She revived her feminine side and flirted her head off with her man. She dove into self-care. She gets her nails done, but doesn't even count that as self-care because it doesn't make her ridiculously happy. What does? Well, after work, she treats herself to Starbucks and she gives herself half an hour to wind down. She might watch the ocean and do nothing else. That's a big deal for a mother of five. She even leaves her phone in the car. Nature is key to her self-care. She recently mentioned to her husband that she wished she had bird feeders to attract birds to their home. They now have bird feeders everywhere, thanks to him. And she can't get enough of photographing the cardinals and parrots that visit every day. But this is just one example of him jumping to fulfill her desires ever since he became her hero, practically overnight, once she became pleasable. Speaking of desires, he started initiating sex again too. Mina reports that love and admiration, laughter and fun times are now the norm at their house every day. And for the first time in 25 years, she genuinely feels beautiful from the inside out. If you decide to put these three proven techniques for saving your marriage into action, you will surprise him and yourself in the best possible way. 
Once you get your miracle, you might even end up grateful for the breakdown before the breakthrough. Something big is happening on the Laura Doyle campus, and you're invited. Last summer, I hosted a free five-day Adored Wife Challenge, and thousands of women joined to take the practical steps to make their marriages last and thrive. And even I was amazed at the astounding results they got. We're about to start the five-day Adored Wife Challenge in 2022 on January 10th, where I'll share my best stuff for free. Register now at lauradoyle.org slash challenge so you don't miss any of the action because this only happens twice a year. Join us on our mission to end world divorce and go to lauradoyle.org slash challenge. I'll see you there. My guest Rosa had no intimacy in her marriage. She was so tired of dealing with her husband's drinking and his mental health issues. And his family was encouraging him to leave her and their three young kids. She was shocked and horrified when he brought up divorce. But today, she says she feels like a princess because her husband is so loving and tender. He's flirty, adoring, and devoted to her and the kids. How did she turn things around? Well, that's what she's going to share with us. Rosa, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's been a vision of mine to be a guest on your show. So, yeah, it's really a dream come true for me. That is fantastic. Well, congratulations for realizing your dream. You're here to really share your success. And uh, we're, we're doing our happy dance together today. Uh, yeah, we are. Transformation in your merit, which uh, what a worthwhile intention and vision. It sounds like you had it. Uh, maybe even when things didn't seem so hopeful for you, is that is that yeah. fair? Yeah, yeah, I did from the from the very start. I was that this was my vision to to turn my marriage around and be a guest. I love it. And so, uh, so for those who are listening who might feel like their marriage feels hopeless right now, one of the first things you did was set an intention to come on this show, which. I think is uh, something that you can take notes on, right? Like, okay, maybe I'll also have an intention to be on the show. Since Rosa did it, maybe I can do it, do it too. So uh, thank you for being an inspiration that way. All right, but let's, let's get the whole, I want to hear the whole story. So let's go back to what things were like in the bad old days. Yeah, um, I, I was struggling a lot. Uh, thing, it felt like things were just getting worse and worse. And everything was so hard, and I felt deeply unhappy and alone. Um, so I've I've been married for eleven years, uh, and we've been together for sixteen years, and we have three young kids. When things really took a bad turn, my husband was drinking a lot, something he hadn't done before. Mm-hmm. He was sometimes not even coming home in the night, and that was just a horrible thing to live through. Uh, waking up with the kids and not knowing where your husband is. Mm. Um, yeah, we weren't really fighting a lot, but the stability that we used to have, it was just gone. Our youngest kid was just a year old when things were at their worst. Uh, my husband uh, has lost his business due to COVID. Uh, and then his father passed away really suddenly. So my husband was drinking a lot. He was not sleeping well. He was taking antidepressants. He like, <laughs> was hardly, there was hardly no income. Uh, and yeah. And he didn't know really, really in the middle of the yeah. night sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And, this, and he was not a big drinker, it sounds like. Previously. No, he, no, he wasn't. So I think he started drinking as a way to kind of cope with his own, you know, with his business failing. And probably thinking this is not um, the man I married. This is not what I signed up for. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I can imagine the pain of uh, being in the middle of the night and you have three kids and you don't know where he is. It sounds terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it was just really, really hard. He was kind of having these breakdowns. And I think the the low point for me was actually taking my 
I'm sorry. I took him to the emergency room because he was just having a mental health breakdown. Um, this was not really what my marriage was supposed to look like. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And these problems continued and his kind of bad mental state just became a huge marital issue because I couldn't depend on him anymore. My husband, they used to be the responsible father and a stable husband. I, I, I suddenly couldn't trust him to be alone at home with our kids. And our relationship was suffering big time. That's so scary. Yeah. I mean, there was no intimacy. Uh, my husband would say things like he wanted to leave and then he would bring up divorce. Um, I was just lost. I didn't know what to do. Um, I don't really have kind of, uh, you know, happy marriage role models. Like my parents are divorced. And in some ways, I think like through the years, I've I've poisoned my own mind, I guess. I I didn't think I could be, could have like the happy ever after marriage. And I was always kind of expecting things to go I was not expecting the best outcome, um, but, <laughs> but I see that now, but I didn't see it at the time. So um, at the time, it just felt like what, this is what life is dealing me. Yeah. Yeah. And I have no control. Like there is nothing that I can do and you just have to stay strong for the kids and Oof. do your best. Oh, that sounds very And strong. I remember like, frantic phone calls to my girlfriend because I was afraid my husband would just leave me in the next few days and I was asking member advice and what to do and how can I stop this and um, they couldn't really you know really help me with anything because they just said like you're you're like the the perfect wife you're 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 standing by your man even like going through all this all this trouble and you're not doing anything wrong but I guess I had the opposite of support from my in-laws. Um, and this was really uh, weighing down our just every day and our merits and his mental health even. He, my in-laws, they cornered my husband one day and told him that they had all noticed that I did not support him well enough when his father passed away. Oof. Ouch. This was a huge, huge ouch. And something that my husband carried with him for for weeks before he confided it in you, you know, told me about it. And I can just imagine like the, the weight that was bearing down on him getting, you know, this these kind of messages from his family. Uh, they basically were straight out and encouraged him to leave me and our three young kids. Mm. Uh Wow. Uh, everything was just kind of breaking down. It was, and I had like no way out even. Um, and one day my husband told me that he didn't love me anymore. Oh. It's, yeah, the worst thing really that you can say. Uh, the, you know, it's, it's the nightmare of, of any relationship, right? It was devastating soul numbing even I can't, I can't even explain it um and that's when I googled <laughs> I googled my husband says he doesn't love me anymore and that's when I found you hmm. uh, what happened when you found <laughs> it? what uh, what did you realize well, I could I, cu- I couldn't sign up for the program fast enough <laughs> 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 was really what happened you felt some hope it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, I did. And I thought maybe I can get support because yes. I just felt really alone. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I, I signed up. I kind of, I, I, I bought your book, The Empowered Wife, I think. Uh-huh. Uh, and then only a few days after I signed up, it, it was only a few days when my husband did, in fact, leave. Oh. It was just like a very 
kind of everyday kind of event, really. It was just so weird. Uh, I just came home from work one Monday. He had a backpack and said he couldn't do this anymore. He had to leave, couldn't be in the house, and had to get away from it all. Oh, Rosa. Awful. Yeah. So I just somehow, I kept up a brave face. Um, and I <laughs> somehow, I, I managed to praise him for taking such good care of himself. Oh, wow. So you're shocked. Someone shocked yeah. that he's leaving, right? I, I was shocked, but you remember I, ha I, I had been kind of discussing this with my girlfriends before. So it wasn't like really out of the blue, but still like such shock when it happens. And I, I, I can't remember the rest of the evening, you know, I just kept it together for the kids. Wow. Okay, wait, so, but I want to pause on this, your reaction to this. So you, you didn't, it doesn't, I don't hear like you crying and begging him to stay or did you do that as well? Or no, 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 I didn't, but he was also kind of vague. He, he was kind of just, I have to leave. I, I can't stay here. I need to kind of, and I, I, I was kind of maybe hoping for the best and not or afraid to think the worst he didn't say divorce so that was a good thing but i mean it didn't i don't i still don't know where he went i don't know what he did you know for the next few days he just wasn't at home and i had nothing you know no explanation really and and your response though i mean this is we have to talk about this response of yours because that is a highly unusual response right you inside you're thinking what, what, what was going on inside? It sounds like it was a difference, right, between what you were feeling and what you were saying to him. Yeah, I, th I think what I, was for, what I was thinking was basically that I was worried for him. You know, his, his mental state, he had, been, he had just been going through such a hard time, you know, for many, many months. Um, and I was kind of hoping and encouraging him to kind of... <sighs> do the things he needed to do to make himself happy. <laughs> and it was always so hard every time that my husband thought that the thing he needed to do to make him happy was to divorce me. Oof. And, and that was kind of, <laughs> because that's what his family was telling him, I think. And maybe he didn't, he also didn't see anything else that he could do. I mean, he lo already lost his job, lost his dad. It was like his life was just falling apart. And the only th and he was very unhappy. And the only thing left was getting a divorce. It was the only thing that I think he was able to see, you know, at that moment. But so you were able to be very generous and supportive of his decision to leave you. Right then. I mean, I think that's extraordinary. Basically, basically, yeah. And I had also, um, so I'd, I'd been in the program for a few days. <laughs> and uh, the skill that kind of, <laughs> I think, like, Laura, you, you really caught me with uh, relinquish control skill, right? Control that was really, you know, the the hard one for me. And I remember, like, it was not the first item. I, I I listened to in the portal, the, the you know, the, the diamond uh, portal, but <clears throat> I kind of saved the relinquished control part until I felt ready for it because it was just so hard to kind of look at myself, you know, in that light. And, and maybe you're going over like all these times in the past where I was controlling and, you know, how I could have done things differently. Yeah. It's really taking a hard good look at yourself and you kind of have to, like, <laughs> I had to embrace myself for it. Uh, but I think it really made an impact because I was able to relinquish control of my husband when he said he needed to leave. And that's just a few days in. I think that's extraordinary because I think it usually takes a little while. I mean, it's yeah. a very painful moment, right, to think, yeah. oh, I've been controlling Maybe I yeah, yeah. contributed to some of this. It's an yeah. awful moment, but yeah. um, 
you were very willing I, to do something different. I had also thought like there is really nothing that I can do to force him to stay. Yeah, you're clear. You're such such wisdom in the moment that you needed it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at this point in time, I just really like I dove into the portal. I I was reading all the books and everything, like <laughs> every minute that I could spare. Uh, was like listening to your podcast reading the books going on the Facebook group just whatever I I I dove in like a hundred you know 110 percent yeah that's great you were into it yeah yeah (laughs) I had nothing to lose that's true nothing to lose and uh and you saw a possibility you saw something different than you'd seen before yeah, I saw hope, I think, because I was listening to the podcast of all the other ladies up there that were also able to save their marriages. And I wanted to become one of them. Yes, here you are. Okay, yeah. so, so what else did you start doing differently besides relinquishing control, which is a huge one? <laughs> That's a really, really big one. But what, what else did you do that was different than what you'd been doing before? Um, I, I kind of, uh, just started focusing on myself because I, I also, I, I discovered that that's what I really needed because there was, um, you know, without a husband, uh, not really knowing what was going to happen next. I have three young kids. Um, uh, and so I, 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 I I started doing self-care. Um, I started doing a lot of things, but um, before I talk about the self-care, I want I want to like tell you what happened next, like the next time that I I, mm-hmm. I kind of talked to my husband because I had still not received like my a pri- or gotten a private coach because I was, I'd only been in the program for a few days and you know, <laughs> it takes it a little while, right? To get your yeah, yeah. So okay. I, I had to kind of schedule the call, you know. Um, but I had already, like, I was going to meet up with my husband and I had not gotten any like coaching and I didn't know what to do. So there is like this bonus material in the diamond portal called how to get him back. Yes. Yes. Um, that was actually the first piece of material that I listened to. Um, and I wrote a script from that material. And I used it for the first time that I met my husband after he left. Wow. I want to hear about that. Yeah. And this is like, this is, I think, really the one that changed my life. I think being able to manage that interaction using the skills. So we cut, we, we, we met um, and my husband told me, and, and like now he used the D word. He said, I want a divorce. Oh. Like th- this is over. And I was kind of, you know, fearing it and expecting it at the, sa- at the same time. So because I had a script, you know, and this was in the script, I was able to say, I hear you. And I complimented him on his personal growth. Uh, <laughs> wow. I, I basically just like stayed on my paper and just told the the, the sentences that I had prepared beforehand and I didn't really like I didn't let him his words kind of impact me too much wow. uh, so I I, fo- I followed the <laughs> I followed that like how to get him back uh instructions like to the to the letter um I I hugged him like three times I think I smiled oh um, wow. I I like there was no begging or pleading. I just totally relinquished control of what he said to what he might do. Uh, there was just one single tear. Um, and I expressed my desire um, to consider a different kind of relationship with me. Uh, and I think this was like my first, you know, pure desire. Uh, I, I, 
I'm I'm not really sure if it would have like gotten through your <laughs> <laughs> well, but it worked. Here's the point. Here's but the it worked. Yeah, your yeah. own life, right? Okay. Because there's like a trick to 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 creating like a really pure desire. But I worded this as well as I could. Um and I saw hope in his eyes. Oh. And that was when I really understood that these skills really do work. That must have melted you. Yeah. And I also felt a bit empowered. Because, yeah, I was not just a victim. No, you weren't. Yeah. Uh, I also think that he was surprised by my approach. You know, because I had this script and it was like not really what he thought I would do. I know he thought, I mean, I would just go crazy and scream and yell and cry and things would be awful. Um, but, and, and then I also told him, like, he did not have to answer right away. Just think it over. Think, like, I would love to, you know, be able to create a new kind of relationship. And just, just think it over. You don't have to, like, answer me right now. Uh, <laughs> um, he did, uh, like, a few days later, he did come back. And he tried to say, like, no, no, it's not really going to happen. No, we, like. I want a divorce. Like we can't have a different kind of break relationship. It's not going to work. <laughs> I think <clears throat> I I heard Coates uh, Coates Marius. She I I like her voice always echoes in my in my head. Like husbands say Allah. It doesn't mean it's the truth. So I <laughs> he would say these things, and I would just say, mm -hmm, okay, or I, I hear, hear you. you. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Just listening. Respect. Like, yeah, because um there really wasn't anything that I could do. You know, if he really wanted to get a divorce, I I mean I can't really stop him, you know. There's nothing really that I I can't force him to do anything anyway. No. So if he really if it, that's really what he wanted to do, I mean, I would just have to kind of, you know, live with it rather. But what I think like the, the script really gave me was that um, it was the option of not following the expectations of people around me, you know, what society kind of teaches us. Um, I could have gotten mad and yelled at him for leaving me and our kids and, you know, all these things that you maybe see on TV and, you know, things that my girlfriend and my family expected me, expected me to do. Mm -hmm. But the skills, they really gave me another way you know, a possibility to kind of honor me and choose what I desired, which was to fight. Yes, yes. So, and I love the thing that you said, I didn't let his words, I forget how you said it, but it like it, it land on you. They didn't impact really me. impact you. Yeah, yeah. And, and tell us about that. Like, how do you not let his words impact you? I'm, I'm not sure how I did it because, and I'm, I'm not even sure when I heard Coach Mary say it for the first time, but maybe it was because I was just so focused on me that I wasn't really, <laughs> I was so much more focusing on me and what I was doing and, and what, what I was saying uh, that I wasn't really focused on like what he said. I just, I just that's like you. That's yeah, you do, you do you, like, you say whatever, you, like, if, if this is what you want to do, that's what you do, but I'm not gonna, you know, so like, maybe I just, like, I, I had, I went into a cocoon, I think, maybe, in, in some ways, it's like, I had to stay strong for myself, and yes. for my family, and my kids. And you um, were there for Rosa in that moment, in a way. Yes. You didn't yeah. uh, abandon yourself. Yeah. You stayed with yourself. Yeah. I think that's so amazing. And um, it's so, it's, I, I just want everyone who's listening to really take that in that you were there for yourself. That's what helped you not, this wasn't even a huge hurt in a way. Of course it was. It, it hurt like crazy. Yes, it, it yeah. did. But it, I feel like it didn't uh, maybe wound you uh, as badly as it could have. Yeah, and I also think maybe because he, he had kind of said these things or hinted at them before, you know, before he actually left, I think that also might have given me, like, 
an advantage to kind of show up the way that I did. Yeah. Yeah. You were prepared. Yeah, I, I was a, in a way. Very prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So a couple of days later, he comes back and says, oh, no, it's not going to work. We're getting divorced. And you said, okay. Uh-huh. I hear you. <laughs> so you're yeah. still not reacting. You're still not begging or. No. Right. no. Okay. And I think that was a big, the big thing, actually. Like, I never, I never pleaded. I never begged. I never screamed. I never kind of, you know. No, there was nothing <laughs> for him to fight against. Or Yeah, yeah. And he was so confused. I bet. His head was exploding. Like, what? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, um, but, I mean, he, he did not come back. I don't know. Like, he was just like, yeah, I'll have to think things over. and. You know, he, he was unemployed at the time. I, for most of the time, I, I didn't know where he was or where he was staying. Uh, the kids were asking me questions. Like, my friends were asking me questions. I had no answers for anybody. Um, what were they asking you? Like, has your husband left you? Oh. Who asks that? Rude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you must have uh, felt very vulnerable. Yeah, I did. I did. And it was also like in the space of a month, um, like my husband left me. Um, I was in a serious car crash. Um, I lost my job. Hmm. And a friend of mine lost uh, their kid. That's a lot. And I don't think I, I could have gone through it with, without the support that I got. And <laughs> this is really where self-care came in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So the other um, women in the program were your self-care. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And just always having someone within reach, you know, having the, the daily group calls, uh, having the Facebook group and making friends along the way. Um, there was always encouragement and kind words. Um, it was, yeah, it's priceless. <laughs> So uh, in, in that first month of the program, you know, after all this had happened, <laughs> I took the hot seat, you know. Oh. Um, so you were getting uh, with, coaching in the group. Yeah, so. I was getting group coaching in the group. And Coach Kathy, she challenged me to become a lady of leisure. Oh, <laughs> I lo- oh Master Coach Kathy, she is something else. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, uh, (laughs) this was the good part of losing my job. (laughs) Now I had some time for myself to do more self-care. So instead of just checking off, you know, my self-care items for the day or, you know, Coach Kathy really challenged me to schedule my day around Um, self-care. Uh, I learned very early on that three self-care items a day is just not nearly enough for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my advice to all the other ladies out there is that if you feel that self-care is not really working, it's most likely because you're not doing enough. (laughs) Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. I also, I like the definition of uh, that self-care is any activity that brings your state of being slightly above neutral and even like just slightly above neutral. So, and so what did you do with that? Like, how did you apply that to your self-care? I, it helped me kind of identify what should be on my self-care list. Hmm. Okay. Right? Yeah. Anything. So- that would yeah. make me feel just a tight, just the tiniest bit, you know, better. And so what, what things made it onto your self-care list? And did some things get eliminated from that definition? 
Uh, no, not really, I think. But uh, along the way, like my list has kind of evolved and changed. But uh, the things that I keep coming back to is like solitude. I know that's a big one. Um, reading, taking a long hot bath, uh, journaling, buying a good cup of coffee. Um, and even just like, yeah, yeah uh, drinking tea in the morning without being interrupted. Yes. <laughs> just having of mothers of young children the world yeah. over, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, but all of this uh, raised your state uh, above neutral, it made you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. So some days I did 18 self-care items. Wow. I had a list and I, every, like every day I would just check it off and I would kind of count. So I made it like into a game. I was kind of competing against myself, I think. I'm, I'm sure I made Coach Kathy really proud. Oh, you are a woman of leisure now. Yeah. That- <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Did you ever think you would say that about yourself? No. <laughs> you have three kids. Yeah. And, and, I, and you worked. You were working at the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, mm. uh, but this really like made me understand why self care is the first skill, right? Because without self care, I wouldn't have been able to do any of the other skills. No. I would have just been a mess. Yes. 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 Right. Because like, yeah, without self-care, I I feel too low to be respectful. I I feel too afraid to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I feel too deprived to relinquish control. Mm -hmm. Well said. Beautiful. Um, Yeah. I, I, I also learned that the better I feel, the more I allow. Mm. the more you allow say some more about that what do you mean yeah. well <laughs> I, some, somebody else in the program said it these are not my words but i wrote them down uh yeah the more the better i feel the more i allow which basically means like that if i feel good it doesn't bother me as much if somebody else is just you know being uh <laughs> yeah being a pain and yeah like your kids or your husband or anybody right yeah yeah Can be, uh, everything but, is a bit easier I guess yes yes okay <clears throat> and I really wanted self-care that would make me soar like the eagle and it's really what I yeah what I tried to do so I tried to do some new things like new experiences as well like what uh, cold water bathing oh very yeah. good okay I did a yoga did it make you feel above like slightly better uh well not in the moment no. <laughs> <laughs> okay but okay. afterwards I felt proud of myself oh so. okay yeah yeah I, I did a yoga retreat um uh, I read a, I, I read some new books that I had always wanted to read, and I was really in, inspired by the self care items that the other ladies in the group shared, as well. I did a lot of skin care as well, taking good care of myself. That was also a big thing, um, and I, these are just like basic things, but sometimes they are really really hard to do when you have like when you're married, you have have a job and three kids and. Oh. Right. Life is hectic. Yeah. Yeah. So you put a lot of focus onto your self care. That yeah. was a big, you, you put a lot of your energy in that yeah. direction. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Did you feel guilty about that? Um, I should have, or I would have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can so relate to that, but I didn't. And I think it was, I think it was just because I, w- I had already hit rock bottom. So it would just have been, you know, I would have just been like so uh, unexplainably uh, evil towards myself if I wouldn't allow myself 
to make myself feel okay because otherwise where would I be this is uh you paying attention to your own mental health it sounds like and you were yeah. clear on that yeah yeah I, I kind of, ha I had nothing to lose, basically. <laughs> wow. And like, yeah. So I think I know. Great place to start in a way, isn't it? Nothing yeah, to lose. yeah. Uh, I had nothing to lose, basically. So, yeah. yeah. And then also like, <laughs> I, I, there was very little that I could control. Yes. Uh, but you I could, could only control <laughs> yeah, myself, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, so how did your husband, how did everyone respond, but especially your husband? Um, so it's like a few weeks passed and, you know, he, he came over, he took the kids and, you know, things kind of, you know, life happened. Um, he, he, I remember he told me like one day, like, you, like, how, how do you feel? And I was like, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. Like, I didn't know how to answer that question and he said because you you <laughs> I think you're happier he told me so he definitely noticed and I every time I would meet him I would always show up as the goddess of fun and light I would always kind of you know put on some music you know before he arrived at the house I would put on a dress or you know do something that would make me feel good um I would always um, greet him with a smile. I would always be happy to see him. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter how hard it was for me or how my day was kind of going or anything, it was, you know, it was, I really, I really put in an effort. And my little boy, he was so sweet. He's seven. Uh, and he, <laughs> he would say to my husband, like, isn't mama pretty? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, can you see how pretty she is and yeah he would like point out like beautiful ladies on the tv and be like oh she's just like mama oh <laughs> you're like i'll pay you later kid that was yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool i love that and my husband was kind of forced to say yes yeah yes yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What choice did he have, right? Yeah. I love it. So you're getting compliments from your husband via your son. You're so your yeah. Husband, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um I I have some like I have some thoughts about the timeline as well, because I know that's what <laughs> so many of us ladies in the group are struggling with. Um and it's really something that I've, I've like thought about this so much and I don't know if I have like the correct answer, but I think I might have something that might help somebody else going through something similar. Yes. Yeah. You have your experience to share. It's the most valuable thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because maybe because um, we had been struggling before my husband left. Um, and that's what kind of made me realize that him moving back in wasn't really the final result. Mm. It was just, it's more like one step or a milestone in the journey of, you know, getting a happy marriage and being a happy wife. Because things will not magically get great just because he's moved back in. Mm. Right? Yes. So the focus wasn't really because, like, oh, of course I wanted him back. I wanted him back so bad. But, you know, overall, things were going okay. I mean, we were having, like, good communication. Um, he would sometimes call me. Um, I would have, like, my list of evidence that he still loved me. Yes. yes. Great yes. thing. Like, every day I would, like, write down you know, every, every positive thing that I could see out of everything that had happened, every interaction, everything that, you know, I, 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 I always made sure every, every single time something positive happened, I, I would add it to my list of evidence. Love it. And in the end, like that list got quite long, Laura. Yes, I bet it did. 
and every time like I was feeling down or or I had kind of felt like I was losing hope I would I would open up my list of evidence I had it on my phone so there was always with me um and that was also a great great support because it's so easy to forget that the, you know last weekend he said this or you know yesterday he did call you without having like a a real reason for having to call you know you, you know things like this it's really easy when you're going through a hard time to kind of forget you know the positive things and and focus on the bad things so yeah so that list of evidence was was a uh, your secret weapon yeah it was it was a, a source of strength yes i love that yeah to every little thing um <laughs> i have like my one of the weird things that went on my evidence list <laughs> um is that um my husband he always put his coffee cup right next to the coffee maker in our kitchen uh-huh. and, yeah that's what like what he used to do before you know and then like he 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 come over like to meet the, the kids or you know and and after a few weeks <laughs> I I noticed, and this was like my huge evidence, (laughs) my biggest one, I think, even though it it seems silly, uh, is that he he made it himself a cup of coffee, you know, while he was at home with the kids. And he he started leaving his coffee mug right next to the coffee maker in the usual spot. So he was taking out his space. This is still yeah. home. This is where like this tiny, tiny little thing. And it really like it made my my month, I guess. It was like the biggest evidence. I'm not sure he even did it like on purpose or even noticed that he did it or whatever, but to me it was a huge you might as well have just said, I love you and I'll always love you, and I'm coming yeah. back and everything's gonna be fine. Yeah. Yeah, coffee cup. Wow. Coffee I love cup that. is in its usual place. Um beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I I did not count the days or the weeks that my husband was away. You didn't count. Okay, so this is back to no. timeline. Like, how yeah. long is it gonna take? And when is yeah, it gonna, like, is it's it gonna been like I, yeah, it's been this many weeks, or you know, things are hopeless, you know. I, it, to me, it was kind of like um, in the concept of shopping for pain. Yes, yes. So am I hearing you say that you were okay? You were okay while this was going on? Like you kind of... No, I was not okay. You're not okay. I was, <laughs> okay, you're not like, okay. I was not okay, no. No, no, no. Okay. Um. I mean, I, I'm not even sure I would have made it out of bed if it hadn't been for the kids. You were really down. It was very, very yeah. heavy. Okay. Yeah. It was really, really heavy. Um, so I just, <laughs> I I had your books and your program um, and I focused on that. I focused on the kids and that's really all I focused on for mm. many weeks. Mm. Um so there's this uh, underlying throbbing pain that you're always yeah. in. So yeah. it was it's not like the pain was not there, it was there. But it you was definitely were, there. And you were but I'm, you were focused. Yeah, and I was so scared. I was yeah. so scared of what the future might bring. And I was just so scared for my kids and everything was just like up in the air. And I had like, yeah, no idea what the future would be like. Um and it was, I felt so alone, you know, yeah. each night going to bed. Uh, it was, yeah, so lonely and just heartbreaking, really. Um, and my husband was gone for months. Um, but I had my list of evidence. I had my skills. So I had something to kind of focus on so I would just not get lost in the depression and the emptiness of all of this um and like you say we set the tone they set the pace right um and the timeline 
is really his paper. There's nothing that I can do that will make him come back. It's not something that I can control. And the timeline is really the ultimate lesson of relinquishing control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the right. test, right? It's the final yeah, exam. <laughs> it is. Of relinquishing control. And so you were yeah. acing this test <laughs> by not yeah. counting the days, it sounds like. Yeah, because what you focus on increases. Yes. That's right. Yeah. 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 So if you were counting the days that he was gone, focusing on that, it would only mean that it would increase, right? That's right. I also think I had, uh, I had like a, a previous kind of life experience that helped me kind of with this timelessness. Is that a word? Yes, like, I like it. You no, know, yeah, just losing the sense of time. I think so. I I have I have three kids, and. <laughs> Uh, when I was pregnant, you know, when we are pregnant, we, we can't control like when our babies will be born. Right. That's right. Yeah. So we need to relinquish control of our due date, basically. It's yeah. It's up to our bodies and our babies and uh, my pregnancies, they, they're all like prolonged pregnancies. So I, Instead of the usual 40 weeks, I would always carry it to like 42 weeks. And, you know, I had to wait and wait and wait, you know, with people calling and asking, like, is the baby there yet? (laughs) You know, pressure. It's the longest two weeks ever. The longest two weeks of my life. Yeah. Yes. Three times. Three times. Yeah. And so I I kind of had that. um, I I had to. I had that kind of experience before, right? Of just, you know, not looking at the calendar, um, not really answering the phone when people are asking you all these questions because it's not really going to help and just take it day by day because it's not really up to you, is it? Not up to you. Yeah. So like the, the timeline thing, it always reminded me of, yeah, of giving birth, basically. So you had training. You were trained in uh, surrendering control of the timeline already. Yeah. Yeah. Served you well. Yeah. Oh, it nice. did. In a very like unexpected way. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. That, but, and also what I learned is that him moving back in is not really the end or the beginning. Um, he can do anything. Uh, for me and he can honor my desires and you know we can have a relationship and we can build things up and you can do so much without him moving in and I think it's so much better to focus on these like little things just one step at a time you know without focusing on you know him moving in or some big thing happening Mm -hmm. Uh, and (laughs) I would I would often imagine that my husband was my boyfriend Hmm. and that he was crazy about me I love this yeah that is so every, every time he would call about something you know maybe something to do with the kids I would always like try to put on the mindset like I was being the goddess of fun and light and now my boyfriend is calling me and he's crazy about me and I mean and because how would you answer the phone if that was the case? Like if, if it really was your boyfriend and he was crazy about you and it was like, oh, he's calling me. And you you like you had to kind of you have to kind of answer like, oh, hi, hi, babe, and be like super yeah. excited, you know. <laughs> and flirty a little. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh so I was thinking like like if we had just started dating. Like, how would I behave? How would I show up? Like, what would I say and do? And, and then I did exactly that. That is genius. I love that, Rosa. That's so smart. And, uh, and of course, it, it's really a way of expecting the best from him, right? You're yeah. imagining, you're focusing on how he's crazy about you and you're showing up accordingly. And then he responded to you. I bet yeah. he responded to you like he was crazy about you. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. He did. <laughs> of course he did that's what you were expecting yeah it came slowly you know and you sometimes I really had to look for the evidence but it was there and it just Uh started kind of blooming you know 
just a tiny bit more than the previous day. So yeah, started growing, I guess. Um, another like huge realization I had with with the program was that <laughs> all all that my husband ever wanted to do was to make me happy. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> yeah. I remember sharing this with uh with a girlfriend. So I, I I've had I've had like a girlfriend kind of, you know, reading your book and listening to the podcast and you know. Uh <clears throat> and she was very supportive throughout my journey. Um and uh it was yeah, it was so good to have a friend, like a, a friend that I could meet in person as well, that kind of, you know, knew the skills and you know, understood what I was talking about and understood my vision with what I was doing. Because I think, quite frankly, I got a lot of my friends and family just thought I was crazy. <sighs> yeah. And, and yeah, I was going to talk about the, the, the desires and like my husband wanting to make me happy because me and my friend, we started like experimenting with this really. And I, I remember saying to her, I was like, <laughs> how did I not realize this before? Like every all everything my husband ever wanted to do was to make me happy. Like, how did I not put two and two together here? <laughs> wow. So when you started experimenting, you could really see it very easily. Yeah. And my 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 coach really encouraged me to express my desires. Um every time that I would meet him and I would really like she was holding me accountable to this. Um and that was great. And I would like express pure desires about, you know, big things and tiny things and, you know, things from our past and things that I would love to do again, you know, something we have been like doing in the past or something. And I, I remember this like small story about um, expressing pure desires. I was with my, with my son, he was like, <laughs> he was doing ballroom dancing. Is so cute. So he was all dressed up, and he was like going to perform for the first for the first time. Oh! <laughs> and it was a huge win that um, my husband I, or I expressed the desire that I would we would go as a family to see him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my husband said, "Yeah, yeah, we'd love to come." So we went together with my with my one and a half year old, I guess he was at the time, um, and it was like a. Uh, a pa- the, you know there were parents everywhere and the kids you know performing and uh, it was a really fancy thing so many people in there and it was raining outside it was cold um, and during like the middle of all this I, I kind of like I just without thinking I just said like oh, I would really love a good cup of coffee right now <laughs> and you know nothing else no expectation it was just like something that I could feel inside myself oh I would love a good cup of coffee right now and then uh my husband was kind of taking care of the of the of of my little girl or our little girl and and then he texted me and said like I'll be back in 10 minutes we're just like we I'm trying to keep her occupied you know with something else and I was like okay sure fine (laughs) and Laura then he walked in he had gone out in the rain with, with our daughter to get me like my favorite cup of coffee and he brought it you know back to me <laughs> and it was it was I think the most romantic thing he's ever ever done what a good boyfriend you have yes <laughs> the perfect boyfriend yes yes you do yeah, yeah. and you must have just lit up when that i happened. did i was like oh my god you know <laughs> and i hugged him and i like i i think there was like a tear even i i mean yeah my eyes filled up and it was it was amazing and it just showed me the power of my desires really <sighs> and that all he really wanted to do was to make me happy and I think if like if we as women, if we're not good enough in expressing our desires and telling our husbands basically what we want, they can't ever make us happy. And then they feel like failures. It's it's so e it sounds so simple once you figure it out. <laughs> yeah. It's so it's kind of weird, huh? That it's not more known, isn't it? Like strange. Yeah. 
Yeah. No one ever told you this and you didn't understand. Like you weren't trained in that. No. Nope. Now you totally get it. And it's like having yeah. a superpower, right? He's your hero. Yeah. You're, the, you're a princess who gets the coffee. Mm-hmm. Your favorite kind. Yeah. Yeah. Good arrangement. Yeah. Oh, and he that. loved it. He he loved like he loved the fact that I was like telling him my desires. Uh, and it was just I think it made him like powerful because he he could feel that he was able to make me happy. And it really, yeah, I think it made him feel very powerful, yes. and very like masculine as well. Yes. He was a success. Yeah, yeah he was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, w- I would say things like, oh, I feel like a princess. And then he would laugh because he was kind of like, yes, mission accomplished, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been trying to do all this time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finally, you're letting me. Uh, <laughs> what do you think that, how do you think that would have gone in the past? What were, what were you doing to block that before? I don't know. I just think like, it's... <laughs> But it's also weird, like for a normal woman to just kind of imagine that she can just like walk around and just say like, I would love this and I would love that like all day long, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> the world does not re- revolve around you, right? You know? Well. <laughs> yeah. It kind of does. It kind of does. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah, it does. But it, I mean, I can... I, I, I would just feel kind of selfish. I mean, just always talking about my desires, like before. It would just be like selfish of me to kind of focusing on what I wanted and instead of what the others wanted, you know. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I was not really <laughs> consciously like not trying to say anything, but with the skills, I was really, really trying to understand like how do I feel, what do I want, and then expressing it. And it really paid off. It was so yeah. powerful. And do you feel selfish now when you say no? Because no. <laughs> you're like giving him a gift in a way too, huh? Yeah, I am. And yeah. it's super feminine. Yes. Yeah. And it really enhances the connection between you, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So what's your relationship like now? Uh, it's beautiful. It is. We have our like, yeah, we have our excellent days and then maybe we have days that are, you know, not really the best of days, you know, sure. but there is, there's peace in my house. There's no fighting. There's no struggle or anything like that. Um, really? There's no fighting? No. No fighting? No fighting. Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. And so... Uh, and but not not every day is perfect. But you have a lot of no, no, wonderful no. days. It sounds like yeah. And, and that day that he came back was that uh, a big day or was it sort of a just another <laughs> step in the journey? How was that? Yeah, it was just an average Thursday. Was it really? Yeah, just a yeah very uneventful day. Um, I, I knew that he was going out for dinner with some friends and he basically just showed up one like late that night and said he didn't want to go to his apartment. He much rather be here. And that was it. And your heart did a somersault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe not as much as when he put his coffee cup back. Right. No, is- I, I think. Yeah, I think the coffee cup actually was like a bigger, a bigger. Event. Yes, yes, because you could see, you could yeah. see the evidence. Yeah, yeah. This just felt like the the next logical step. In some yes, way. it was obvious. It was obvious yeah. at this point. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So it really, think, the transformation happened along the way. It happened while yeah. you were gone, in the, and then, in the small things, in the small in things. Day. Yeah. Wow. And there was like, <laughs> there was no big gesture. There was no apology. There were no promises. There was like nothing, you know. Wow. Wow. So did you need that conversation? Do you still wish for that conversation? We have had kind of that conversation, you know, bits and pieces. And, you know, in the, in the, in the time since he came back. 
uh, and um, and I'm I'm actually quite happy that it wasn't like a huge thing of him coming back and uh, of us like clearing the air or whatever you know and him making like promises or anything like huge like that. Just it, it was just the normal, just a very normal thing that happened. No big thing. Um, and I'd say that you know slow reconciliation is really the best, right? Well, it feels it sounds like it feels more solid. Like it feels yeah, it does. Well, was there a part though when you wanted to be able to tell him how much he hurt you? And yeah, absolutely. And did you ever get to do that? Mm, yes, I did. Later, I did. Yeah. And how but did I? That, yeah. And I never brought it. You know, I never brought my disappointment in him to him. Ooh. Okay, so how did you tell him that how he hurt you without disappointment in him? It kind of just happened. I I was I was triggered. It was just the other day, um, and he did see me cry. You know, maybe like a few times, or you know, he 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 knew that I cried. You know, I I think my my boy told him, and you know, he he knew I was suffering. I, I didn't really have to tell him. Yeah. Uh, so you were just vulnerable. Uh, he saw. Yeah, yeah. You're very vulnerable, Rosa. Yeah. It's really endearing. So for me, so I can imagine, very attractive for him too. So, okay. <laughs> but thank you, thank you. But um, yeah, I was I was triggered. You know, in the in the bad old days when he would just kind of leave and I wouldn't know where he was. So. One evening, just the other day, I was uh, I was putting the kids to bed, and he was like, I don't know, doing something in the kitchen or something. And, and then when I came back, he wasn't there, and I don't know where he was. And I tried calling him, and his phone was turned off, and that was all it took. I just completely broke down. <laughs> yeah, and I just like I started crying just on the staircase. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, like 15 minutes later, my husband walked in. He'd just gone to the store to buy milk. Oh. And he just, like, he saw me just crying on the staircase. And I said, like, I thought you had left. And how did he respond? Oh, it was just the softest, uh, the softest thing ever. And he just, like, he just picked me up and, yeah, carried me to the bed and told him, told me that he would never leave me. Oh my gosh. That must have felt so good. Yeah. So sweet. So a lot of tenderness. Yeah, he was so sweet and tender. And I think really like if he hadn't understood it before, he did really understood in the in that moment the hurt that I had. You know. And it was very pure. Right, you weren't blaming him, or there was no um, saying you should have told me you were yeah, going. Yeah. It doesn't sound like right. There was no criticism. No, it, it was a very pure. Uh, yeah, it was just pure hurt. It's almost it's like an ouch. It was just your tears. You knew. Yeah, yeah. He knew you're upset, and he can't stand that. He doesn't want to see you upset. Yeah. He wanted to comfort you. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's very courageous of you to be so vulnerable. Yeah, you, you've done a lot of courageous things along this journey. I know you say I had nothing to lose. Yeah. And I guess that really worked in your favor. because <laughs> you You're like, okay, I got to jump off this cliff. All right, <laughs> why yeah. not? Yeah, <laughs> why not? Yeah. So what is your... What is your tip for a woman who's listening? Her husband has left. Uh, she feels very hopeless. Maybe she's a young mom too. Um, oh. And she wants what you have. She wants her husband to say, I'll never leave you. I love you. I'll never leave you. To comfort her when she's sad and hurt. To bring her her favorite cup of coffee in the rain. Yeah. How could, where should oh. she do? <laughs> Focus on you and your self-care, really. Don't feel selfish. Um, 
just really know that by focusing on you, you're really building your relationship. Um, another, uh, another thing that really kept me going throughout all of this was, um, and this was something that I heard in the group, uh, it's act as if he's already made the right decision. Yes. Yes. Right? Choosing your faith, expecting the best outcome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To really, really kind of think deep on what that really, really means and then act according to it. Because there's enormous temptation, right, to focus on the scary yeah. outcome that could is possible when you don't know the future. Yeah. So you're making a conscious decision very often to... Yeah. I mean, and you have also, you have nothing to lose. I mean, if, if you're like in the situation that I was in and your husband is talking about divorce, I mean, you have nothing really to lose by just saying, I hear you, and then act as if he's already made the decision not to, to go ahead with it. <laughs> yes. I mean, there's nothing really, uh, things really can't get any worse, right? Right, that is right. And even if they get any, like, if any, even if that happens, if, it wouldn't have nothing to do with you, you know. It's not up to you anymore, right? Yes. Um, another thing is just give him no reason not to say. Would it tell us um, more about that? It's the thing about not bringing your disappointment in him to him. Yes. Like not complain, not you know, nothing negative. Starve what went wrong of oxygen. Yes. Right? Yes. So speaking of this, uh, what about the drinking? There was heavy drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> there is very little drinking now. You get a big smile on your face when I ask you that. Like, yeah. yeah. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big relief. I mean, it was really weighing down on us or on me and you know, our family. So um we never had that discussion. Never did, huh? You never, never told him to stop drinking or drink less? No, no. You just and did. Yep. I, I just decided, like, he knew that his drinking was, you know, wasn't good for him or us or anybody. He knew it. I didn't have to tell him. Um, and he just kind of, he, he would have to do it on his own if he was going to do it. it. Yeah, right? Wow. I cannot control him. I'm not his mother and I, I'm not going to behave like I am his mother. And also, <laughs> if I would have like brought up his, his drinking or things like that, I would have just given him, I would just be like handing him on a silver platter a reason to leave. Yes. So you can go and drink as much as you want without someone nagging you or criticizing yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that, that's a great example of not giving him a reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, being able to never criticize. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty, it sounds almost like, <laughs> I think if I was, uh, you know, maybe listening to this podcast, listening to you, I would think uh, maybe, oh, I can never do that. You know, I can never do what she's doing. <laughs> I, I am just the mere mortal woman. And, um, well, I, I used to joke with my coach that, I had to learn the skills twice, you know, once when he was gone and then again when he was back. back. Yeah. So um, I, I have like, <laughs> I, I have made the mistake of, you know, complaining, you know, about, you know, one thing or another, you know, in everyday life, you know, after he came back. And, and that, that's what I mean. Like when you're, when you're not living with him, like, it, you know, these things don't really happen, but like <laughs> when you're living with, with people, like these small irritations come up, you, yes. you're yeah. exhausted, you're having a bad day and you complain about something, you know, it doesn't really matter at all, but still you complain. And now I try to kind of catch myself in the act and, you know, I, it has happened that I've kind of stopped mid sentence, you know, <laughs> sometimes I've, I've kind of blurted it out without thinking. And then I'm, other times I've been able to stop mid sentence, and you know, <laughs> so I'm 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 still you know I'm I'm still uh yeah I'm, I'm 
making the skills a, a bigger part of my everyday life with my husband. Yes. And it's really a journey. It's not something that happens overnight, you know. Yeah, because it's uh, it's you that's growing and developing yourself and yeah, yeah. becoming the best Rosa. Yeah. yeah. And the, the awareness also increases. And then you can see, like, maybe the mistakes that you, you know, about, you know, maybe like, this isn't something that you should really control, Rosa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you notice it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that just happened. So and how, how has it impacted your kids? Your three littles. They they're just so happy that their um, that their dad is back home. It's I could just really feel the the burden that all of this was having on them. And, and you know, they did cry and they did act out and it was a really it was a really, really hard hard time. Um but they do feel secure now in in our kind of in the family and with our relationship they they do absolutely it must they, be so good to give them that home court advantage yeah yeah and it's so good it's something that i maybe took for granted before yeah not any. yeah yeah and and what would you say to rosa from before if you could go back and what do you tell her what you know now what do you know now that you want want to tell her or maybe you <laughs> tell her. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just um, learn to stay on your paper and and learn that it's your responsibility to make yourself happy. And your happiness is his drug. I love it. And uh, how is the the family and the friends, everybody that was maybe not really pulling for your marriage before is there uh what, what's that like now there hasn't really been a discussion you know uh because i i wasn't able to answer any about anyone before you know or you know when all of this started i just I, I either just said nothing when people tried to ask or i said like i can't talk about this or you know some version of that um and then when he moved back home, they just they didn't ask. And personally, to me, it was just a relief not having to explain it to other people, you know, or kind of defend myself and my actions and my, you know, how I, you know, what what really had happened. Because people always have their opinions, um, and I'm not really just not interested in hearing them. Love it. You're just so on your paper, Rosa. So yeah. yeah. It sounds like you feel so solid now that they're they're no longer a threat. They're no longer it doesn't it doesn't really matter anymore. It sounds like yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would because I had like I had this you know problem with my <laughs> with my you know in-laws, you know, they weren't really supportive. Um and I use the the no oxygen trick, right? The like, so if there is another uh, another woman involved, which wasn't the case for me, but I used the same trick of of giving her no oxygen. So I I gave my <laughs> my in laws no oxygen. I would never talk about them uh, with my husband. I would try my very best to avoid thinking about them or what they were thinking or saying about me or anything like that. Um, and this was really like a minefield and another, you know, another element of the give him no reason not to stay. Like, don't talk about the hard stuff. Yes. Yes. It wasn't worth it. it wasn't worth it. Yeah. It wasn't worth it. Just starve it. Just deal with it on your own or, you know, have faith that it will get, you know, better or something will happen and, you know, do your own healing because, I mean, your husband can't heal, heal this anyway. I mean, very good. He can't fix it for you. So, yeah, he can. and what is it like now? It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> you get a big smile again. Yeah. Um, my husband just bought us uh, a bigger house. 
that we're moving into. Um, <laughs> I expressed the desire for this house and he just said yes and he bought it. <laughs> he hadn't even seen it, Laura. Really? He hadn't yeah. even seen it? Yeah, he hadn't seen the house. He just knew his he, wife wanted the house. Yeah, so he made an offer and we got the house. And he's just so devoted to me. And he, 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 he's told me this like a few times, like you are my priority, like you and the kids. Like this family makes me happy. That was just make you feel so, so good. Yeah. And it's really what I needed from him. Like, all this time, you know, and even before, you know, everything happened, it, these were really like the words that healed me, I think, in a sense. You were longing for that. Yeah. And now yeah. you have it. And you now created it. this. You did that. You yeah. can look back and say, this is my accomplishment. Yeah. I saved my family. I fixed my family. Yeah. I made my home loving and safe. And tender, yeah. And it's a huge accomplishment. Like, woo, like, <laughs> made a touchdown. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'd like to give you some kind of a, a wife award. Yeah. <laughs> Olympic wife. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this has been amazing to hear your story, Rosa. It's super inspiring and full of hope and full of specifics. Things that you did. Yeah. So valuable. Uh, so I know you are um, really making an impact on ending world divorce today. Thank you. Thank you. This has been great. Something big is happening on the Laura Doyle campus, and you're invited. Last summer, I hosted a free five day adored wife challenge, and thousands of women joined to take the practical steps to make their marriages last and thrive. And even I was amazed at the astounding results they got. We're about to start the five day adored wife challenge in 2022 on January 10th, where I'll share my best stuff for free. Register now at lauradoyle.org slash challenge so you don't miss any of the action because this only happens twice a year. Join us on our mission to end world divorce and go to lauradoyle.org slash challenge. I'll see you there. And now it's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice that has me live it this week is something a student in the Adored Wife Challenge posted that her husband's counselor told him, and it had her feeling crushed and hopeless. And she's not the only one. But what did the counselor say to him? Well, the counselor said that this student's husband had outgrown her. That's something you hear a lot when celebrity couples divorce, right? They say, we found that we grew apart, but we'll always love each other, and we're now completely focused on being co-parents of our beautiful children. They say that instead of saying, you know, he cheated with the nanny, or can't stay sober, or we can't talk without fighting. It sounds nicer that way, but it's still a divorce. And divorces aren't nice. They're heartbreaking and hurtful and sad for everyone concerned. But because we hear this a lot, that these beautiful, glamorous couples grew apart, it seems like something that just happens and it's just so amicable. Like he decided to move to Spain and she decided to live in Japan. So they kissed and hugged farewell like, like a tragic romantic movie because they outgrew each other. I used to think that was probably what happened with my husband and me too in the bad old days, even though we grew apart. And what I meant by that was that I had grown and evolved and he had not. I felt I was much more spiritually evolved than him, which is not a super spiritually evolved perspective. I'm so much more spiritual than you. 
at all, right? It's sort of the opposite of admirable spiritual qualities like accountability and humility and even love. I mean, I can't even imagine Gandhi saying, you know, he's divorcing his wife because he had outgrown her. That just doesn't sound very Gandhi-like. Or what if we applied this to uh, your child? You know, you have a kid and when they're seven or eight, you think, well, this kid and I have really grown apart. He thinks saying, guess what? Chicken butt. <laughs> uh, that, that's really funny. And I think it's annoying. It's like we've grown apart. I should just adopt him out to another family that's growing slower than me. Saying that you've outgrown someone is very hurtful to them, of course, because you're saying they're not worth growing with. Because that's what happens in marriage. You grow together, not always in the way that you imagined. And if it seems like your spouse isn't growing, then maybe that's an opportunity for your own growth. It was for me. And when I grew, I was amazed that he seemed to have grown so much too. And for that reason, the advice the counselor gave this student's husband that he had outgrown her is the very, very worst relationship advice I've heard all week. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll share four fail-safe secrets to a long and happy romance. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I went to my first funeral via Zoom this week. And while I was watching it, I thought this is not as exciting as watching The Mandalorian. <laughs>